Montenegro's pro-Serb and pro-Russian opposition alliance has claimed victory in the parliamentary election. Thousands of people flooded to the streets of Pogorica on Monday evening to celebrate after preliminary official results gave a wafer-thin majority to opposition parties. The ruling pro-Western Democratic Party of Socialists won the most votes with 35 percent but fell one seat short of a majority. That was enough for opposition leaders and supporters to call time on President Milo Djukanovic's 30-year rule. I came here to celebrate the historic victory of the people of Montenegro over a criminal regime. I'm very happy with the result of the elections because we'll change the power after 30 years through a vote without violence, without revolution, without counter-revolution, without coloured revolution. It's important that we witness the changes. I am afraid because I think that what is happening directly jeopardizes the path that Montenegro has taken, namely the path towards Western democracies and Western value systems. Jamie Shea is a senior fellow at Friends of Europe in Brussels and a former deputy assistant of NATO. He says it's too early to assume the next government will chart a different course regarding NATO and the West. The largest party was still the party of Democratic Socialists, the party of the governing president, Milo Djukanovic. Uh, he now has a 40 seats and he only needs one more seat to be able to form a coalition, even with a wafer thin uh, majority. So I think for NATO, the first thing is that we are probably going to be seeing a coalition in Montenegro and coalition tends to mean a moderation of policies. And therefore, I doubt uh, that that coalition will want to change the fundamental alignment of Montenegro. NATO membership has already been achieved and it's negotiating to join the uh, European Union. From NATO's perspective, how will this election result change its relationship with Serbia, but also the wider Balkans? I think that's a very good question, Rosie, because I think one of the lessons of uh, uh, this election is that, unfortunately, like so many other uh, places in Europe, Montenegro remains a divided society, with one third of the population being ethnic Serb and often looking towards uh, uh, Belgrade and towards Moscow, as we've seen in this election. Uh, and therefore, one lesson will be that we all need to redouble our efforts to uh, integrate various ethnic groups into a set of national, a form of national identity, uh, more uh, particularly in Montenegro. That surrounds also uh, the government coming to some sort of settlement with the Orthodox Church, one of the contentious issues. But I think, uh, again, your question is right, because I think the second aspect is the more that the EU and NATO can embrace Serbia uh, and bring Serbia into a Western pro-EU oriented course, uh, the more I think in Montenegro, uh, the Serb forces who may feel alienated at the moment will also join that pro-Western course. So, yes, the answer does lie very much in how we handle our relationship with Belgrade. Um, let's look further east very briefly, if we can. A headache for NATO is currently the tensions escalating between Greece and Turkey. What can NATO do to try and placate that and what do you think they will do? Well, I, I think uh, the first thing, of course, is to work very carefully with the European Union uh, on this, because the EU is taking uh, the more prominent diplomatic role at the moment. Uh, the Secretary General, Jens Stoltenberg, is in very close touch, both with Athens and Ankara, uh, to de-escalate the situation. And, of course, NATO over the years has been used to tensions uh, regarding overflights and military exercises in the eastern Mediterranean, particularly uh, the uh, summer months. Of course, it's an unwelcome problem uh, to, to to be having. Uh, but my sense, uh, particularly also with the United States getting involved in helping out, is that we will eventually get Athens and, and Ankara around some kind of table and figure out some kind of arrangement to share drilling, drilling rights in the eastern Mediterranean. Uh, so I put my faith in uh, the quiet diplomacy, which is certainly going on behind the scenes at the moment. A trial begins.